capital is the most important one because if you think that you are very good and you have the disbalance of your techniques and skill set and condition then you will be always in the losing part okay but if you think you're very good and you train smart and hard then your mental preparedness will be totally in a different zone because fighting is actually you put yourself in a kind of zone with your opponent where actually nothing else exists two person are in a kind of zone if you're a fighter you will understand what i mean you can focus on that person movements they seem to be from the outside very quick seemed for you a little bit slower the time is different the time changes when you fight with somebody everything changes your vision changes i can fight with my opponent but the surrounding of 360 degree i'm also aware of that because everything is spot on all the senses are activated and when you train a combination of western conditioning training i would say i mean the 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 heart rate conditioning the anaerobic training what you need as a fighter yeah you need to train aerobic training and anaerobe yeah that is very important that because you have the recovery time in uh, maybe 40 second rest time when you between the fights but the western method and the i would say the oriental method gives a different kind of approach when you combine these two things you can develop a body machine which is very extraordinary shalom shalom giving our praises honor glory and worship to yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem ha kudash double honors to the elders and the apostles that do well overseeing the tabernacle of David, which are the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Greetings and salutations to you, Akim, upon the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, in truth and sincerity. To you, I say Shalom. Now, of course, you have just witnessed uh, the clip of um, the philosophical clip from a martial artist master in regards of. Um, the um, yin and yang, or may I say the infusion of Western and Oriental um, martial arts and the importance and the, the, the different components that come with being a fighter and being calm in an uncalm place and, and, and how to essentially mentally deal to be that in that hour. And it inspired me to do a lesson in regarding of the, the, the development of perfection, the art of truth. Um, Pontius Pilate, he asked Mashiach uh, in the interrogation room, he asked our Lord and Savior, he said, what is truth? And um, it is indeed us that have received the truth, that have received the Holy Spirit, and it was granted via a prophet by the name of Abba Bivens on down to the fathers being turned to the children. And through that spirit, we're able to, we're able to liberate our mind, and from liberating our mind, we'll be able to liberate ourselves from these carnal bodies. But it starts somewhere, and, and where it starts is the book of Psalms, the 111th chapter and the 10th verse. And it reads, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. And so in order to have and possess and maintain and exercise wisdom, you have to fear Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. And that's something that you really got to be of the elect to truly do. And you see these guys with this magnificent knowledge that they have in their forte, like Sakari and 
these different individuals, whatever you call them, 19 keys, and these different figures of the um, of our community, these different, um, I mean, I say political figures of our community. And um, you say, wow, with this magnificent knowledge in which they possess, um, why is it adding up? Why, um, why will it not work out for them? Well, because their knowledge is... Um, that's it is simply knowledge and it's not wisdom because they don't fear your how about Shimia was shy. And you got these in- individuals talking about the ordinance of heaven and and how many million light years this and and space travel that. But um they're not gonna be able to be that guy in that hour because they don't have the fear of Yahweh by Shimia was shy by Shimakudash. And therefore they do also err in doctrine. They err in understanding, and they've been deceived. Well, one could say they deceive themselves by pride, which is the which pride indeed is the art of deception. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. And I want to follow that up with a bit of Hebrew hopscotch, as the infidels like to call it, but we um, call it precept upon precept, line upon line. I want to complement that with the book of James. The book of Nabi Yaikwab, Prophet Yaikwab. Um, and this is the book of James, the fifth chapter. Pardon me, not the fifth chapter. I'm on the fifth chapter, but I would like to go to the first chapter in the fifth verse. And, and it reads, it says, if anyone, pardon me, and it reads and says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and unbraideth not. Now, all that all man is speaking of the man of the Lord. Because for those who are, if it unbraid is not, that means it, w- it won't be taken away from them. And we see these individuals who fall out the truth, who have lost the oil or, and, you know, things of that nature. They, they truly were never those guys. They just, it, they, were, um, they were wandering stars. And we see a lot of these individuals and they talk up a good game and they, you know, they're very, you know, they they seek to be comely amongst and before the nation. But in that hour, when it really matters, that's not preserved for them. That's not, that's not their lot. It's a lot of the prophets. It's a lot of the true men of the Lord that are surely shall endure into the end and not compromise their integrity and not lead the people into the slaughter, but feed the sheep. Feed the sheep. Feed the sheep. And who will you find doing that? The tabernacle of David. And who the keys were granted unto? <clears throat> In continuation, it it reads, it says, verse 6, it says, But let him ask in faith. So the next portion in which we must harp upon in order to enter into um, completion, may I say, is faith. You pay, Faith is a pivotal component in this thing of ours. Um, and I, I'll really let the scripture speak for me because it says, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. And so you don't want to be double-minded because the scripture says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You want to be calm in an uncalm place. Because we're we're coming into an uncalm place. 
The hour of temptation is a uncommon place. For alas, that day is great for none is like it. It is even the day of Jacob's trouble. Well, that's an uncommon place. And you have to be disciplined and diligent in that hour to be, de to be delivered and saved out of it. That he is speaking about the Bahayayim um, uh, Yasharala, the elect of Israel. Not all Israel is speaking of the elect. And that's what we push here. We push the importance of the elect. Verse 7, it says, For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. I'm going to read that again. It says, For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. And you're not going to you're not going to receive what you desire if you lack faith, if you don't believe. In the, in the Son of God, if you don't believe that he'll do it for you. And we have to believe that he indeed will do it for us. He's shown us he will. He's shown us he has the capability. It's just a matter of if we execute on our part. And the aspect of that execution is the... Um, the faith in which we profess and in that we have to and what do you mean in act faith well that's called works because faith without works is dead and and I will get that let's go to James the second chapter and let's go to the 17th verse it says, even so faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Yeah, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. So there is this, you know, with faith is, is conduct. That comes along with faith. Your conduct should, should and will match your faith. If you have poor conduct, if you do what you want to do, if you mock the name of the Heavenly Father, all right? If you talk against the man of the Lord, if you speak against your elders and your leaders, if you do these things, it shows the lack of faith that, in which you have. Because that's, that's simply a, an example of a lack of faith. Now, let's go to, um, I want to go to the book of Habakkuk. And this is the, the development of perfection. These are key constituents. These are key necessary aspects that we have to have. We have to display. We have to have faith. We have to have works. We have to have fear. We have to have wisdom. We have to do his commandments as it, it, it was written, as it is written. Pardon me. Let's go to the book of, oh goodness sake. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk. And it just doesn't want to come up, does it? Pardon me. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk. Let's go to the second chapter in the first verse. It says, I will stand upon my watch. All right. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Let's go to that term reproved in the Hebrew. Can we do that? And we know uh, we know certain individuals, they hate when we go into the Hebrew. 
a disdain that the, the fact that we go into the Hebrew to have a, a more perfect understanding. Well, it's okay. Um, we're going to continue to do it anyway. Uh, which the term um, reproof comes from the Hebrew word tawakacha, uh, tawakacha, all right? Which tawakacha, pardon me, tawakacha is going into rebuke, correction, punishment, chastisement, all right? And that's the thing with Great Millstone. They get mad at Everybody hates Gray Millstone because they're what they call the police of Israel. Yes, because we uphold the, as in the, the, the uh, Greek, the police actually comes from the Latin term polis, which means it's the policy. We are, we are the upholders of the policy of the nation of Israel. Absolutely. We'll wear that badge with an honor. And um, that comes with rebuke, it comes with correction. And they, everybody just wants to go along and get along. No, that's not how we operate. We don't operate like that amongst each other. We rebuke and um, reprove each other way more than you guys. Way way more than we rebuke you guys, to be honest. Because you guys are just you guys are just emotional, man. All of these other guys who say they they say that they follow Yahweh Shai, you're not following Yahweh Shai. You're just some emotional niggas, man. That won't that don't want to take correction and you hold the nation back and you're gonna have your family starve to death and die of thermonuclear missiles because you don't want to get with the program. See, you need to know this so when that happens, you understand why it's happening. Verse 2, it says, And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision. And remember, if I'm not mistaken, the video in which I, uh, the small segment of the video, he spoke, the gentleman spoke of having vision. You have to, um, you have what he said, you have to slow it down, you know. And when you, when you, you see the fight from the outside, it's just very fast and rapid. But you see, when, when you are a fighter and you're fighting against the opposition, you have to slow it down. You have to analyze. You have to, you have to see that movement that nobody else sees. You have to, and see, that's what the prophets do. That's what the prophets do in the spirit. We see things that others catch not. And that's why we're the, we're the leaders and that's why we should be followed. And the Lord has taken away um, the, the false prophets of the nation of Israel. He's taken them away. He's taken them away and it's going to come a point where you're only going to have to, you're only going to have the true men of the Lord to... Uh, to to basically take heed to if you are truly of that number for the wicked will never take heed and the scripture says none of the wicked shall ever understand they because they were born in vain and because they weren't chosen so how could you expect the unchosen to understand what is uh, meant for the initiated so we're not upset when they don't get it we know they got a lot to fulfill we just hope to stay faithful and true in ours, in all regards. It says, this is verse 2, it says, And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. And that run is that practitioner in which the um, Grandmaster in which, the, not, not, not Grandmaster J., but the individual who he's, enti he's titled as a grand master, I believe in the art of Kung Fu, in which he was speaking of, um, and I'm liking something physical to spiritual. That's essentially what I'm doing here. But he was speaking in regard of, um, he was speaking in regard, I'm going to read the latter part of the scripture again. It says that he may run that readeth, okay? 
and uh, essentially running is doing the work running is is man is managing and measuring the prophecies all right for you to understand it all right now and he and the gentleman was speaking about the importance of the mentality and and training and and the the the, the necessity to do what you have to do to be prepared for a specific hour And we hope to be prepared for that hour. For it nightly approaches to even tonight, the, the moon is turned into blood and has darkened. And for there's a is a blood moon and it's very as I as I speak, the moon's the moon um dazzles in the heavens um with a with a, a reddish ruddy tint. And um that's a sign for the end. That's a sign for and then the chariots dazzled and, and danced all in the midst of the heavens in which we know them as the chariots, the world calls them UFOs. And um I mean see this is not something that I have to argue with you about. How about you look up in the sky? And a wicked and evil and perverse generation seek of after a sign. The sign is there, what you seeking after it for? And Yahweh Shah said, Verily I say unto you, this generation should not receive a sign yet for the sign of the prophet Jonah and the Ninevites in that regard. Now going to receive a sign. And see, and what does that mean? Because um, the Lord sent Jonah, he told Nineveh that it was going to fall, and it didn't fall when Jonah said it was going to fall, but it, but it fell though. To, even Tobit said that he said, I believe the things in which the prophet Jonah said concerning Nineveh. It failed though. And so there was a they were seeking after the sign of okay, it's um it's about to fall in 40 days, like Jonah said. Oh, it didn't fall, so we're gonna go back to do what we're gonna do, do we're gonna go back to doing what we were doing, and the Lord got him at a later season. But he got him though. See, they had an opportunity to correct themselves, but they, but they, um, they had a lot to fulfill. And that's what we're coming to find out and to see manifest that these people who can't adhere to what our, our instruction and our commandments, that we have the authority and are ordained of by the heavens, by Yahweh Shemashah, these people who, who can't adhere is not their fault, it's because the Lord deceived them, because the Lord is not dealing with them. I should be K, the Lord deceived them. I, you, I see the Lord deceives them. These other guys, who, these other Israelite camps, the Lord deceived them. He did. For you do not think that Mark, the MOTB, all right, is not the CHIP. You are, you have, you've been deceived, man. You, you've been deceived. For you to think that it's okay to deal with your woman on the Sabbath day, Wow, you really been deceived, haven't you? The Lord deceived you. And so that's how we know that you guys have been deceived. By your gait, by your talk. By your lack of discernment. Which is going to become more and more crucial in the times to come. Got a couple more. I gotta go to, let's see here. Just gotta go to the Apocrypha book. This is the book of, not first Ezra's. Let's go to second Ezra's. This is the book of second Ezra's, chapter nine, verse one. He answered me then and said, measure thou the times diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which the signs of the prophecies, and what did the Lord say? He prophesied of the blood moon coming before the great and dreadful day. People don't take heed. He prophesied of wars, the rumors of wars. 
He prophesied of these different things. These were signs. These were signs. And um, people continued in their folly and not and did not take heed unto. Wow. This really is is this is it for you guys. Now it's time for you guys to lose terrible, about to lose bad. In continuation with verse 1, it says, And when thou seest part of the signs past which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Which Yahweh is going to visit us with Either if you're righteous with compassion, if you're a man of the Lord, if you're of the stock of Jacob, you know, the elect, essentially. Or you're going to be destroyed into, into um, wormwood. You're going to be completely destroyed and annihilated. And you're, and you're going to suffer and it's going to be painful. You know? This is the reality of the matter. I have to paint the picture to put the fear in your heart. That way we can start with wisdom. It says, Then shall thou understand that this is the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world that he made. And that is the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh and of course, he's going to visit the earth with plagues and things of that magnitude. But the true visitation um, which even when you go into that term visit, it coincides to the word judge. All right, and that's the day of judgment. What what it is is called the day of judgment. All right. Now, I'm gonna finish it off with Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, the seventh and the eighth verse. It says. And every one of it says, and every one that shall be saved. And shall be able to escape by his works and by faith. So you have to have both the elements of faith and works. And that's that um, Western and Eastern or Western and Oriental format of, of the arts in which the gentleman was speaking, out, speaking about. You got to have faith and you have to have works to um, truly ignite the um, immortality or, the, um, the, or to truly develop perfection to be complete this is whereby ye have believed verse 8 shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land which the land is Israel Jerusalem all right our homeland all right and essentially all the further crescent you know, you know that's the part of the covenant of Abraham. We didn't forget about any of these things. You know, we truly didn't. You know, the Lord has put it into our remembrance. The Lord is merciful like that. He's granted us opportunities to see, to hear, all right, spiritually. And of course, thank you, Lord, physically as well. All right, let's see here. And essentially, that's um that's all I had in this regard. Um, get once again giving all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, Bashim Al Shai, Bashim Kakudash, the bond said elders and the apostles of great millstone. Citations to Yakim Shalom. Keep the faith.